Hello YouTube chess lovers and welcome back to Steven Sturgill's Chess TV channel. It is episode, uh, I think four or five, <laughs> I think it's the fifth. Anyways, we're going to be covering the Benoni today. The topic is Benoni and its various wonderful iterations and let's get started. Okay, so... Um, oops. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, there we go. D4, C5, D5, pushing. This is a very aggressive system. Knight F6, Knight C3, A6, E4, securing the center. Black pushes D6, A4. Again, very aggressive. Bishop develops to g4. Queen up to d3. e6. h3. Kicking the bishop. Drops back to h5. Knight comes out to e2. Obviously wanting to go to possibly f4 or g3. f4 indeed. Pawn pushes, kicking the knight. Knight takes the bishop. Knight takes knight. Pawn up to h4. Knight d7. g3. Rook c8. Bishop develops to h3. And that's not as rare as you might think in Benoni systems, especially today. It's, uh... This is not... It's not that it's not classical chess, it's just that it's very, very uh, sort of hyper-modern in, in a way. It's a lot of the aggressive play is, is very, very uh, ultra-aggressive, and sometimes almost a little a little helter-skelter, a little, a little bit on the fringe. And the queen comes to e2, knight goes back to f6, g4, knight goes back to a, f8. Well, uh, that is, knight d7 goes to f8. Pawn pushes, kicking the knight. Knight drops back to d7. Bishop e3. Queen comes out to a5. A very aggressive looking move. Bishop d2. X-ring the queen. Queen drops back, or moves over rather, to c5 h5 and that king is still in the center guys that's uh not looking ultra safe <laughs> and since the rook has already moved to c8 he can't well castle uh on that side so something to keep in mind uh, if you if you're ever playing in a system like this and you see the black opponent or if you are black and you see the white opponent uh, just hanging out in the center uh, there are multiple ways to get at that king, and uh, we'll just see how this game developed. Rook comes to c7. White rook comes to g1. Queen b6, striking the weakness on b2. Castles. Uh, also good here, I think, is just pushing h6. Um... G6 would be a mistake here. That would not give you just a real quick taste of that. That's just... In fact, here you would enter a repetition, draw by repetition. So that's why... Um, G... Excuse me. Uh, G6 uh, would be a positional blender because now black has the instant draw by repetition apparatus. We'll just look at that one more time. And there is no way to avoid it. So do not do that in this position. <laughs> um, believe it or not, h6 is actually an excellent move here. And we'll look at that in a minute. But let's go back and first look at the uh, original line, which again was castles. I know that looks strange, but there's really not much that black can get at uh, to that side of the king. Black queen goes back to a7. Bishop e3. Queen b8. a5. 
knight c5, queen exchanges on c4, knight fd7, h6, now striking that weakness that I was trying to get earlier back on whatever move that was, I can't remember, it's been, it's been a while. <laughs> g6 is like a sensible, strong defensive move. Queen comes back to a2, preparing uh, possibly b4. There should be six. Takes. Knight from d7 recaptures to b6. Pawn to f4. Takes. Bishop takes back. And again, that black king is still sitting there in the in the center. It's I think it's duck season and. Okay, uh, knight c5 to d7, knight c3, e2, queen comes down to b7, knight up to d4, knight d7 develops to c5, obviously striking the weakness on e4, bishop says nope, I see the weakness and I'm shoring it up, queen drops back. Now looking to get in possible ideas of obviously coming to g4. Bishop shores that up and says, nope, you're not coming to g4. don't want you down here in my field of play. Rook goes to b7, knight up to c6. And it's looking pretty much lost at this point for black. Yeah, that's, that's, it's resignable now, guys, honestly. But we'll just see how the game developed. Pawn to a5, queen took, rook over to f8, pawn goes to e5, threatening to blow up the entire center, queen to f5 in the last ditch display of uh, desperation, rook com coming up, protecting that bishop, pawn takes, not a strong move because of g4. <laughs> Queen gives itself up. Bishop comes down to hit the rook. If you're wondering why the rook uh, was not taken here on by e5, well, that's kind of this is kind of why. Um, Yeah, it's it's lights out uh, really really fast. <laughs> so, in case you guys are wondering why did uh, Black not recapture there with the pawn? Okay, so back to the game. Bishop out. Bishop comes to d7 with check. Knight takes. Rook up, grabbing that bishop on g5. Pawn down and another show of supreme desperation. Queen just politely drops in to b4. Uh, if black doesn't do something, mate is coming inst instantly. That rook now is guarding the e7 square. So queen up to d6. Knight up, hitting the queen. Queen drops over. Here comes the rook. Doesn't matter, I'll just take it with the knight. The rook is coming over to provide thrust and protection. Takes, takes. Yeah. And mate. That's a mate in 53 against an engine. So I want to tell you guys that against a human being that may not be as familiar with these setups and strong, strong tactical and strategic ideas and play. White is for choice. You're just gaining so much space. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful attacking game. Uh, also very positional. So let's run right back through that before we delve into the next uh, very strong variation. So just briefly run through this again.
And there are other ways, obviously, to play certain key portions of the game, but you need to be careful which choices you make because you could very easily steer into a draw or worse, into a loss. I love the way white just grabs a lot of space, a lot of tactical squares. The knights and bishops are extremely active in the Benoni system. Uh, it goes without saying that the queen and the rooks are pivotal, often controlling the D and the G files, often going to the A or the H files as well. And uh, there's just so many tactical possibilities in the Benoni middle to end game that it's just incredible. I mean, it's just almost like take your pick. And they're not all good. You, you've got to use some wisdom. I mean, for here example, just eyeballing it uh, naked style, I thought this was a really good good move here. And it is. So uh, you would give this type of check, absorbing the rook. That rook's got to go somewhere. King's coming up. And let's see. Mate is on the board. It is... Yeah, those are just spite checks. There we go. And that's mate there. A little bit longer, but... And I also thought... Where was it? I think... I thought here... Um, this was a very interesting move. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's also a very playable move, obviously. Yeah, very, very playable, I might add. <laughs> In fact, um, yeah, it's just slightly longer than the other solution. That's So there's a lot of ways to end the game. I mean, once you get that four in, uh, it's pretty much take your pick. And I also thought, at least to my naked eye, that, let's see, what section, what area was it in? Let's see. I think, yeah, I thought right here this also looked very tasty to me, just pushing the pawn. And let's see. Wow, that's a... Uh, very interesting approach. <laughs> That's a oof. Ooh. Oh man, mama pajama. That is not looking good for black. Ooh. Ooh, that's that's better than the other one that I showed you guys. Uh that's made in 60. Okay, anyways, there's a the game of course was made in 53. That it ended like this. So Point is, there's a lot of ways to finish off an opponent when you win. It's just overwhelming force. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. And now we can develop uh, another idea if you're going to play the Benoni. And that is, let's see, I'm going to get this right. Yeah, we'll look at this one first. This, this launches into the Czech Benoni which is quite interesting. So let's take a look here at the, how white and black develops in the Czech Benoni. Okay. I'm not going to annotate too much. You can, you can just watch the game as it develops. White now achieving that delicious B7 square. <clears throat> Comes back to B3, very typical in setups like this.
and notice guys that here black is just very very hemmed in he's not really going anywhere uh, the, the bishop cannot get involved at this point the rook would be semi useless to, and to, if you're thinking of forming a battery for black like on the f file uh, has to guard that pawn and just development is a little slower in this particular structure but white is definitely gaining ground definitely improving on nearly every move offering an exchange Bishop invading into the king's terrain, grabs snacks on a pawn. White is now achieving a massive thrust up the king side. And it's becoming overwhelmingly bad now for black. takes takes finally the queens come off and that bishop is just a monster there's just way too many pawns it's just ridiculously bad uh, obviously resignable uh, times 10 so that's that's a little bit of a slower uh, system with that setup but still very effective for white uh, as you saw it's just very natural development in that setup and oh lordy lordy where did my screen go apologize sorry for that <laughs> that's uh, first for everything i was not trying to hit that window i was trying to hit uh, yeah so let's go back Okay, if you play this, this is quite funny to me because I really thought I was in a Czech Benoni entering this setup. But in actuality, this is technically an old line in the King's Indian Classical. So, But it's virtually a doppelganger for one variation of the Czech Benoni. So I, I don't know, maybe some of you old-timers out there can tell me whether this is legitimately a Czech Benoni or not. But I'm calling it a King's Indian Czech Benoni. So... <laughs> And this system, uh, let's look at how white develops using a very traditional Benoni structures. Black as well has the uh, very French uh, uh, closed position. Knights come out. Bishop to d3, very, very classical square for the bishop. And as you notice, both h3 and a3 have been played. Strong, sound, defensive um, setups. White castles. Black queen comes to c7. Takes. Black pushes, kicking the bishop. Comes back. Black now takes back. White now takes back with the knight, hitting the queen. She moves over to b7. Knight back. Black knight comes to c5. Knight f3, d2. Knight f6 to d7. Knight grabs the pawn on c4. Knight d7, e5. Rook comes up, uh, giving extra protection to the b2 square, or pawn rather. Bishop d7. F4, my favorite move in chess. <laughs> Knight comes out. Uh, bishop takes back. Uh, queen to F3. Rook over. And I think maybe that last move was not ideal for black, but this is just a sample line, so... 
Okay, the rooks come over, getting very, very strong, obviously, on the A file. Bishop now begging for an exchange. There it is. Up, up, takes, takes, queen to g4. Again, this idea of queen to g4 is very common in the uh, Benoni and uh, obviously here in the old line of the King's Indian classical. And it comes up to e6 with check. Rook to a7, looking very, very unstoppable now. Knight takes, rook over, which looks weird. It's pretty much a sack. There goes the queen. There goes the knight. <laughs> And there goes the last heavy piece for black and made us obviously very, very close. Yep, and there it is. Um, going back to, I think we're almost there, let's see. Yeah, here if a black king takes the rook, we can look at that briefly. As you can well imagine, it's even much, much worse if black takes. That's made in 39 there as opposed to 54 or 45. I'm looking at different uh, parts of the variation. So I don't, let's see. Going back. Yeah, that's made in 54. There's another variation somewhere in there that goes mate 45, but okay. So you can easily also get into this. Again, I don't know if it's a Czech Benoni or not, but the computer's listing it as a old line in the King's Indian classical. Okay, let's look at another variation. Let's see. Yeah, this is the Schmidt Benoni. Let's go ahead and look at this now. So, oops, not that one. That's Schmidt Benoni now. Uh, one key difference, as you can see, the knight on c3 blocks in the pawn from instantly developing to c4. Uh, it's a very interesting system, and then obviously e4 is ultra aggressive. And we'll just kind of blitz out some moves. We're not going to talk too much about theory. Knights come out. Castles. Bishop develops to a very classical square. If I, here it could have gone to, to d3, I'm sure. But then, not sure if um, there may have been something different in the position. Let's see. Yeah, not much. So that's pretty much just a matter of taste. Those are pretty much equal value there. So let's just go back to the, the game. Castles. Knight develops to d7. h3, kicking the bishop. Bishop exchanges. Rook centralizes. Bishop back to that classical e2 square. Rook coming over to the b, uh, b8. Again, that's a very classical setup with where you see the bishops vertically aligned, uh, oftentimes touching a queen or touching a rook or touching a, uh, or, or aiming at a king. That's a very, very classy uh, and sound structure. Okay, black goes to f8 with the rook. Queen up to d2. Okay, white is now pushing with a very aggressive, you've got to know your stuff if you're going to play a move like that and leave the king, uh, I don't want to say butt naked, but uh, it's at least semi-wide open, especially if there are tactics in the position. This is not a move I would make unless I was very comfortable with the theory. So having said that, he tucks away to h1, same thing for the black king. F4, very aggressive. Okay, knight to F8. 
and we have uh, oh oh sorry where did one hit the wrong button there sorry guys man that thing is sensitive let's see oh where was a yeah sorry so let's okay we had just gone over the uh, f4 and knight to f8 move <laughs> Okay, so g5, knight comes back to h5, takes, takes, f5, and you can just visibly see that the black king is in very, very severe danger now. Knight comes to d7, rook to f4, b5, d1, bishop comes out to d4, Rook to h4, and that's looking pretty much god-awful now for black. Knight comes to e5. Knight comes to g6. Bishop goes to d d4, giving itself away for check. Knight is taken. F column is wide open, or f file, rather. Look at that sweet move to f4. And here, black chose not to play the more provocative uh, head-on, you know, direct move. And let's figure out why that is. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, well, white simply goes up a piece, obviously. And will very soon, I'm sure, uh, create a uh, open passer. And, uh... At some point, black's going down here, obviously, quite rapidly. And the white king is headed for safer pastures. Yeah, just wholesale exchange and white queens. I'm not even going to continue that line. It's obvious what what the idea was. So uh, let me get back to the. We're almost there. Okay, so black reinforced the C file. White queen comes to D2, striking a weakness on D4. Black queen shores that up. White rook to C1. Black. Seeking an exchange and gets it. Knight to f2. Black comes back to strengthen the c file. Knight to d3. King g7. f4. Queens come off. Again, white is up a full piece. I'm just going to blitz through these moves because it's obvious that. Uh, it's just a crushing end game. Yeah, Black tried to get crafty there and go for mate. Not going to happen. And that's mate in 62. So. That's a, a way cool system, if you want to look at that, and uh, some strong ideas in the Benoni and in the 
what I think of as a King's Indian Czech Benoni hybrid. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I hope I gave you some food for thought and some ideas on the Benoni. And uh, there are a lot of variations in there. And maybe next time we'll look at a semi-Benoni, which is a related system. All right, until then, take care and keep chessing.